Okay, so again with the eight o'clock sales. This one. Love eight o'clock sales. Oh man. So uh, and you know you get maybe one a week. Uh, those pre nine a.m. So this is an eight o'clock sale, and I start asking about video games, and the guy says, "Yeah, he says you know I have an old ColecoVision, but I don't know where it is, and I don't have the right the cords to it." I'm like that's three pretty bad things. Uh, but in my mind, I'm thinking. This could be an NES. He just doesn't know. That's right? true. Because yeah. people are morons. So he says, yeah, it's a clique division. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here talking to the guy, trying to figure out exactly what this is. And he, and he bottom line is he says, I don't know where it is. And then I could hear her sitting there in the driveway. And she said, I know exactly where it is. And uh, she says, here, I'll go get it. So she gets up. She goes in the house. Meanwhile, that guy's standing there. And he says, he looks at me and he says, can you help me lift something real quick? Always help. <clears throat> Always help. Are you Whatever. kidding me? I don't care what it is. I'll change your I'll oil move, and your I'll move your lawn if yeah. you want me to. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so, he, so I followed him into the house, <laughs> which is a little weird. He wanted me to help him move the recliner outside so he could try to sell it. And I shimmy this recliner out the doorway. And, and uh, as we're holding it, it's a pretty heavy thing. And I'm, I'm sitting here trying to figure out, we're both trying to figure out how to get it out of the doorway. And the lady walks by us holding a box. And I'm looking in this box, and I'm seeing N64 box games, Super Nintendo games, and they're just they're just coming out of this thing like a geyser. And there she's dropping them on the ground, and, and I'm watching this ColecoVision right <laughs> walk by me, and she's walking out towards the driveway area where everything else is. And I, I asked her nicely, I said, "You can just set them right there." I didn't want her to walk out to the main area. No, put those things don't in plain bring those sight. Out to the public. They're gonna be gone. Yeah. I helped the guy. We get the recliner out. I. I make a beeline for these games, and, and this is a photo. This is all the one find. All three Donkey Kong Country games. Yoshi's Island on the Super Nintendo in the box. In the box. Strategy Guide to you know, Zelda. Oddly enough, a Super Game Boy. This guy thinks it's a ColecoVision the whole time. Ugh. So I said, great. Uh, how much do you want? He has no idea, and he keeps telling me he doesn't have the cord for it, which apparently is a big problem for him. It's not a problem for me. So I threw out a number of $40. In hindsight, I should have, my initial number should have been a little bit higher. Because, I mean, this is such great stuff. I should have maybe started at 60 you know? I might have started at 40 though. Yeah, I started at 40 I said, look, um, how about $80? The guy said, he kept saying, doesn't have the cord, doesn't have the cord. I don't care if it doesn't have a cord. And I just said, this is more than I normally pay, but I really want this. And I'll give you $100 for all of this. And he said, that's fair. This had already been a pretty good day. I found some Super Nintendo games, as you can see. Super Metroid, Secret of Mana. and of some Decent NES, games. Decent titles. <laughs> and the guy that I got those from had a bunch more games, and he just would not sell them. He, I managed to pry Did those. Flip out of Benjamin? Well, in retrospect, I probably would have done things differently. I yeah. was, this was a couple of years ago. I was still learning. You're still I, a rookie. I managed to pry those two games out of him, plus... Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on PlayStation 2. That's like a $50 game. What? It's one of the most expensive PlayStation 2 games out there. That and Super Metroid and Secret of Mana came from the same guy. And I think I gave him a $20 bill for the three of those. You could do worse. Uh, oh, and, oh, not just for the three of them. For all the NES games, too, that were there. And he had more NES games. He had great titles. He had Contra. And he had all kinds of... He just wouldn't sell them. I kept going through one game after another. Breakthrough, I remember that game. I used to rent it and beat it. Every time we rented it, it I would beat it. Anyway, it was so short. I already had that find in the bag, right? And I'm kind of toward the end of the day, kind of on my way home. We're driving through this community sale. And I'm, I'm with my wife, and I drive past this one house in the community sale, and they hardly have any. It's, it's a it's a table like this. It's like a card table with just a small amount of random you crap. You never know. You and never know. I was just about to keep going. Uh, let's go. Let's go home. And my wife goes, he looks like a gamer or something like that. He looks like you or something like that. And I go up to this table. I just start giving my speech. And as soon as I got, I just kept naming systems. I started with NES. I just kept going. And then eventually I said keep DS. Going. And when I said DS, this guy, him and his wife both popped up. Or girlfriend or whatever. They both were like, oh yeah. And he was like, yeah, I've got... I got something in there. He goes out inside, and he comes out, and he's got a DS and five or six DS games. Good titles, too. Uh, yeah, I'm All looking at Zelda's, Mario's. Uh, Dragon's Lair, that was a decent one. Dragon's Lair. So good good DS titles. Yeah. 
And then he had Shantae on Game Boy Color. And I saw that, and I, I just about crapped my pants. Okay, so Shantae in the Game Boy Color, is it the most valuable Game Boy Color game? If it's not, <laughs> it's it's in the top two or top three. I mean, it's it's very rare. Extremely rare. It's a rare. fun game. It's a Capcom yeah, game. It's yeah. a, it was just... It was they, one of the last games to come out on One that. of the last games, yeah. and they just didn't make very many of them. And I just said, how much you want for all this stuff? And he said, everything is a dollar each. Shantae. Every game, including Shantae, Shantae and the DS. For a dollar. I handed the guy, like, I don't know, a $10 bill or something, whatever. And I walked away. And I, I got in the car. My wife was sitting there. Oh. And, I, and I hand her Shantae. And I said, look this up on eBay. Oh, my goodness. And Because I just wanted to see her reaction. She didn't know anything about video games. So I, she wouldn't have known. But yeah. she, was, she got her phone when she looked it up on eBay. You know, it's like a, I don't know, 200 and stuff. Game. Only two hundred and something, and you sold it, right? I did. I so I get in my car and I th- they were kind of busy. I was just like, whatever, one yeah. and done. I walk through. Within five seconds of being there, I see this box and I see all these games and uh, a, super, a Nintendo console. You can't see it in the photo, but there was a Nintendo console also. And you know, there there are no games here that are that are going to break anything. Mike Tyson's Punch Out, probably the best title in there. Um, you know, there's Dragon Warrior, Mario Brothers 2, Metal Gear, Fax Xanadu. The first thing I, I think of when I see games is I just think, what am I going to offer, right? Because you're never going to pay sticker price. No. This time hopefully I, there is no sticker. Yeah, hopefully there is no sticker. People complain about uh, garage sales not having oh, price stickers on them. That's the way you want it. I don't want yeah. price stickers. Because no. if they have a price sticker, they're kind of stuck on that. And yeah. mentally, like, they're just stuck on that. And they don't like to to budge a lot. But if there's yeah. no price sticker, you got a lot more wiggle room bargaining. So trust on, me. On this one, I, I I stood there with the box in my hand, and everything's just rolling through my head. What am I gonna offer? What am I gonna offer? Uh, you know, I'm probably gonna offer twenty because that's kind of the sweet spot. And uh, and then I happen to notice that there is already a price sticker on it, and it was five dollars for the whole box. So I got an NES and all these games for five dollars. Score. I mean, in terms of the quality of games and everything, and you know, it, it isn't among the best ever. But for five dollars, it's one of the most economical finds that I've ever had, and I did, and zero negotiating involved. It's not a one dollar Shantae, but shut up. That real quick. Real quick. It was just like a Sunday morning sale, and I just I I stopped. You by. and your Wii U's, man. I've Dude, never found a Wii U. I did well for Wii U this year, and it was owned by a little girl and her. It was $80. On it everything? Was for everything. That's not the a bad games, price, man. but... I mean, the system alone is 150 bucks. Yeah. Right? Yeah, not a bad price. Yeah. So I gladly gave her uh, a $50 bill for that. Uh, so the photo that you're looking at now is is several different sales. The the one sale with the PlayStation games, you can see there's Crash and Spyro. Um I'm right in front of the guy at a little table about this size, and I said, do you have any video games? And he says, no, I don't have any video games. So I started naming all the consoles. And I even named PlayStation. All the Nintendo consoles. I'm just, And he says, no, no, no. Right in front of him, between him and me, there was, I don't know, a piece of paper or something, and I just picked it up. And these three PlayStation games, four PlayStation games, were sitting there. And I, <laughs> I kind of looked at him because what five seconds before? No, I have no PlayStation games. It's like you have no PlayStation games except for these four directly in front of you. Yeah, uh, and I paid a buck each for them. <laughs> it's not an earth-shattering find, but it just goes to show you. Even when you stand there and ask, people just don't. And it was it. literally under his nose. He still told me no. He did not have it. Um, and then uh, so real quickly, there's some Star Wars figures here. Um, yeah, you don't see that very Yeah, how often do you see vintage Star Wars figures at a garage Twice sale? in five years. Yeah. So I'm at this sale and started chatting with a guy, and uh, I don't know how I led to it, but he ended up just reaching. I don't even know if he was the guy running the the yard. He was an older guy, way older than me. And he pulls out a Ziploc bag out of his pocket, and he has these four Star Wars figures. And he says, well, are you interested in buying these? And, uh, you know, again, I don't really collect these. Uh, they're in decent shape. No weapons. Um, 
those look like great figures, but I, I wouldn't be willing to offer you more than 15 bucks uh, for the four. And he goes, that's fine. So I got for $15, I mean, the, the Vader alone is a $15 figure normally. I mean, there's no lightsaber or anything, but, you know, again, all pretty tight limbs and you can't go wrong. Everything else in this photo is just some random stuff. I, I got great deals on all of it. I don't think I paid more than a dollar for any one Bat game. Battlefront 2 has regained some value lately. I think has it? People are... Because they're so tired of the new Battlefront. At the new battle <laughs> they go back to the old ones. I know. <laughs> Screw like it you, dipped in yeah. value a little bit a yeah. year or two ago, but it's kind of back up to last I checked. Okay. It's like a, I don't know, $40 game or something like that. Really? Yeah. Wow. Mostly one sale. And that, that Wii there is one of about 12 Wiis I found over that summer. Every single weekend, I found a Wii without fail. Nice. Yeah.